I think that anything's possible, but that you have to make it happen. Welcome back to the podcast. I am Katie Dalebow, your host, and I could not be happier to be back podcasting after a brief hiatus and a, I guess we'll call it a rebrand of the podcast. It used to be called the Wellness Wonderland Radio, and now it is called Let It Out with Katie Dalebow. It kind of rhymes, and I hope you like the theme song by Caroline Dooner as much as I do, and I'm just going to give you an FYI. It's going to be stuck in your head, and that's just what happens with that. So, you know. I hope you guys are all having an amazing summer, and I just want to say thank you so much for all your support from listening to the podcast, leaving reviews, joining the private listener Facebook group. If you want to be in that, link is in the show notes. And you guys are just awesome. I'm so excited that I can grow and evolve and change and grow up online. I've really been growing up on the internet and I'm so grateful that people aren't holding me to old standards of who I am or who I was and they're letting me evolve into who I'm becoming. And I think that's my goal with this show is to have conversations with people about people becoming more of who they are. Because that's my goal right now. It's not to become more like anyone else. It's to become more of myself. And that's the path that I'm on right now. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what journaling really helps me do. It helps me become more of who I am by becoming aware of who I am and what I even like and what I even believe, which is constantly evolving and changing as I learn more. So I think that's really important to remember. But Anyway, onward to this week's episode with the amazing Tiffany Hahn. She's so cool. She has a podcast called Raise Your Hand, Say Yes, and she had me on that podcast when my book came out, and she's just a really, really cool person. We recorded this episode a while ago, so a few of the things that we talk about might be a little bit dated just by saying, you know, her goals for 2016 and and things like that because we're well into 2016. But it's actually really cool because she mentions these things that have happened in her life. And she's just an awesome lady. We talk a bit about creativity and entrepreneurship and motherhood and how she met her husband through this amazing story that has to do with The Secret and Oprah. And it's just fantastic. So I hope you like the episode as much as I do. And I'm going to get into that super quickly. But I just want to say a couple things and a couple announcements about the show and the sponsor for the show. So First of all, if you want the links to anything you ever hear in any of these episodes, just head on over to katiedalebout.com slash podcast. That's an easy link to remember. Or you can just click in on your phone and get the links there. You can sign up for my email list, which will give you the new episodes every single week. And you can join the listener Facebook group, which I already talked about. So that's a really great thing to remember. Also, my podcast now is called Let It Out, which you may recognize matches the name of my book, which is called Let It Out, available now in Barnes & Noble. It's in all of your bookstores, and it's really, really great. (laughs) I really like the book. I'm really proud of the book, and I would love it if you would check it out. So I just want to mention that. I'm probably going to keep mentioning it on the show from time to time, but I wanted to mention it today. So order it on Amazon, check it out. I would love for you to do so. I love journaling and I'm really proud of the book. It's this collage of all the things I've learned from different people over the past few years of my early 20s. So I hope that you enjoy it and I would love your feedback on a review in Amazon or letting me know in some way, tweeting at me. I'm at Katie Dalebow on all social media, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, so that's where I am. FYI, if you need to find me, I am there too much. We're all addicted to our phones. We are all addicts for our phones, so that is where I am, trying to work on that. But also, I love the internet and I love connecting with people. 
in an online sort of a way and an in-person sort of a way. Anyway, on to the sponsor of today's show. It is none other than Gabby Bernstein. She is my mentor, she is my friend, and she is the founder of Spirit Junkie Masterclass, which we joke that she created for me. And what we realized is it wasn't just me. It was me and a lot of other people who wanted to do something similar to what she does, which is sharing about spirituality and spiritual principles in a really meaningful, deep way. And I found my own groove in sharing what I think is helpful in my life. And that's everything from curating the people that come on this podcast to writing my book with Hay House, which is the same publisher that Gabby has, to teaching yoga, to having my own online business in a way. So I really am grateful for Spirit Junkie Masterclass and cannot recommend it enough. And she's launching it right now. There's a free video training series that has been live for about a week and a half. And I've been talking about it and tweeting about it in the Facebook group and online. So you might have seen that. But if you haven't watched that, you still can. And you can check out signing up for her Spirit Junkie Masterclass Digital, which is really, really, like I said, something I cannot recommend more. And yes, I'm an affiliate for it. And yes, it's the sponsor of this week's podcast. But I really do recommend it a ton, and it's a really amazing program that has helped me in my life in a lot of ways, and so has Gabby herself, and anything that she creates and puts out into the world is so genuine and so real to her and her mission, and that woman has never let me down. So I really love her. She's been a guest on the podcast twice. She's going to come back again. She's really awesome, and these are the bonuses that you're going to get if you sign up through me through this podcast. So if you want more information on all of this, where you can watch the video and get more info on any of this, go to katiedelba.com slash masterclass. You know that link's in the show notes, but just so you know, it's katiedelba.com slash masterclass, one word, and all the info will be there on that page. And... I just want to read off to you some of the bonuses that you're going to get from me specifically if you sign up from me. So you're going to get a signed copy of my book, Let It Out, A Journey Through Journaling, and one of my favorite journals sent to you in the mail, the snail mail. You're going to get three mastermind calls with me in July, August, September to go over any questions you have about the course. I'm really going to tailor this to whatever the people on those calls want to talk about. So if you want to talk about your business, we'll talk about your business. If you want to talk about podcasting, anything that you, I hate the term pick my brain, but you're going to be able to do that in there. It just sounds painful. Like you're taking tweezers to a part of my body that's like very sensitive. So I don't really like the word pick my brain, but I can't think of anything different. So that's what we're going to call that. And then I will also have a private Facebook group for people in just in Spirit Drinking Masterclass. It's probably going to be really small and you guys can work together and I'll be in there and it'll be great. And then we'll do a free, when you buy it through me, online workshop where we can talk about any topic that people really want to talk about. Again, could be podcasting, could be book writing, could be creativity, could be morning routines, like whatever you guys wanna do, we'll do there. And then extra access to interviews with Jordan Bach and Nancy Levin and some other people that I will be speaking with. And then Gabby's also doing two live training calls and she has a lot of other bonuses that her husband Zach, who is like a business pro, came up with about contracts and negotiating and insurance information and literally like everything you would ever need to know about starting a business in a really awesome spiritual way. And I love Gabby and Zach, and I really, really love this program. So I'm so happy that they are sponsoring the first episode of the podcast. So check it out. And I'm going to mention it again at the end of this episode and tell you where you can sign up. And then I'll also stick around for that. And then I'll also tell you who is coming up on the show next week. So I love you guys. I think you're awesome. And thank you again for sticking with me. Enjoy this episode with Tiffany Hahn. Enjoy checking out Gabby's Spirit Junkie Masterclass Digital. And thank you for being my friends. I know I already said that, but 
I really mean it. And I love you all so much. And shout out to Caroline Duner for the new music in this podcast. She created the theme song. She played the music on her ukulele and sang it with her beautiful, angelic voice. And just check out everything she's doing. She has a podcast called The Fuck It Diet Radio. And she's so cool. She's just an amazing, smart, creative, so incredibly talented. God, that woman is so talented. She's an amazing singer, writer, creator. She's just very smart and kind and cool. And yeah, I just gushed about Caroline. So, oh, she had me on her podcast a couple weeks ago. If you want to listen to that. But she's also had on a lot of the same guests that I've had on my show. So if you really liked... Christy Harrison or Kelsey Miller, they are also guests on her show as well. So shout out to Caroline, shout out to Gabby and Spirit Drinking Masterclass Digital, shout out to Tiffany Hahn for being the guest today, and shout out to you for listening. You guys are awesome. Leave a review on iTunes if you liked this podcast episode. Share this particular episode with a friend if you want to do that. That'd be cool. And I love you. Welcome back, everyone. I am so stoked for today's episode because I have a fellow podcast host, Tiffany Hahn, in Wonderland. She's been coaching women since 2010, and she's the host of the amazing podcast, Raise Your Hand and Say Yes, which I love. She has a degree in psychology and a background in nonprofit fundraising, and now she's a hilarious and amazing (laughs) and accomplished speaker and obviously podcast host, business coach, and so much more. So I'm so excited for you to be here to entertain and educate the heck out of all of us. So thank you so much for doing this, Tiffany. Yeah, Katie, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So tell us a little bit. I've heard you um, tell your story before that it was a bit of a winding road that got you to where you are. So could you talk about that process a little bit and how you figured out that this was the path you wanted to be on and and what that kind of took? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I will try to give you the Cliff Notes version because this question could be an entire podcast episode. Um, So as you mentioned, I uh, studied psychology in college and um, I always had this um, this drive to be of service somehow. And I always said, I want to help people. Um, And I thought about after school, I thought about doing a master, like a PhD program in psychology or a master's in social work. And I never never quite landed on what that was. So after school, I waited tables for a couple of years. Um, And then I got into real estate for about a year. I got my real estate license. And this was before uh, everything kind of fell apart in terms of real estate. This was in the Bay Area back in 2003 um, when real estate was doing quite well. And I was like, oh, I like people. I like helping people. Maybe this is what I want to do. And I quickly learned that it was not what I wanted to do. Um, And then I worked in, as you mentioned, nonprofit fundraising for a few years. And um, while I liked that work, I liked what I was doing. I I never really felt connected to, I mean, I felt connected to the cause, but it never felt fulfilling for me in that kind of creative, passionate way that a lot of us are looking for. And so I left my nonprofit job in 2009 and I said, I'm going to travel. I had some savings and I didn't didn't really know what I wanted to do specifically, but I said, I'm going to do something creative and um, started working at a paper shop and started a card greeting card line and made art and um, eventually came around to coaching uh, and was like, this sounds like the thing to do. And then I started coaching while I concurrently launched a creative workshop space called Tea House Studio that I ran for a couple of years with friends and kind of grew my coaching business. Such a cute name. Thanks. Yeah, it was um, it was an adorable space, um, but it wasn't. Again, it was this thing that was a great idea, but not necessarily what we wanted. Um, and so now I'm doing my coaching full time, and it's great, and I love it. That's amazing. I think it's so great to hear stories like that where you can see the full trajectory, like you can see the entire path and that it wasn't one linear thing because 
you know, I think when you're in your 20s, I've been saying this a lot lately, but it's like it's the second adolescence that like no one really tells you about and you have to kind of figure out what you're into in those formative years right after college, you know, where I think the the thought while you're in college is that you'll graduate and then you'll just be doing something that you love or is at least tolerable Mm -hmm. and you'll do that for a while until you retire and that's just not the case with anyone I've ever met (laughs) so um so it's really great to to kind of hear your story and and so many similar stories like this so looking back you know at that that young person who was graduating from college not really sure what to do and then as you you know tried real estate and all of these other things um What would you tell, you know, that that person just graduating from college or in her early 20s, not really sure of what was going to be ahead? Oh, God. I mean, you know, I think that anything's possible, but that you have to make it happen. And not knowing exactly what you want to do is okay. I think that that for me, even now, I'm still evolving. I'm 36 and I'm still like, what is it exactly that I want to be doing? And I'm still making changes and starting new things and letting things go and trying to stay connected with my work. And, and so I think just giving people permission to know that, like, I think we're all waiting for like this magic answer to appear and it may never, but to me, that's exciting because it means that I can create whatever I want. So instead of being like, man, why don't I just know, you know, kind of leaning into that and being like, well, what am I curious about now? Um, and I think young people these days are, are at a, they're in an exciting place where um, creativity and innovation is so valued. And with technology now, like you can create anything, um, you know, you can start a business by like putting up a website and then you have a business and there's more that goes into it. You know, it's not always that simple, but sometimes it is. And so I think that it can be really exciting, but I'm sure it can also be really pressure filled for people. Yeah. And overwhelming just because there's so many options, you know, Mm -hmm. which which is a good thing, but at the same time, like I said, can be, can be overwhelming. And I, I think I've heard you talk about this before in your podcast, but you know, trying a bunch of different things and seeing what sticks, just like what you did. And that's the whole kind of point of your, the title, I think, or the way I take it, at least, of your podcast of like, raise your hand and say yes, put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to be rejected and, um, and and try new things. And I think that that's like the most important part of, of creativity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's it's something I say a lot is like, it doesn't matter what you do, but it matters that you do something. And so we often just wait around trying to decide what the capital R right way to go is. And for most of us, like if you could go down road A or you could go down road B, it doesn't really matter. But what matters is that you just start going down a road. Um, You know, life is going to take you on a different path and and nothing is ever going to work out the way that you expect it to anyway. So you might as well like get moving. Yes. Oh, I just... Amen. I love everything that you said. That is all so fantastic. So you mentioned, you know, just now that that you're always still learning. And Mm -hmm. I think that that's brilliant and great. And I I actually just posted on Instagram like this morning, this thing that said, um, I'm still learning like Mm -hmm. Michelangelo, you know, like I think I hope I'm learning and learning and learning until I die. Right. So what would you say is something that you've learned in the last year that might be helpful to the people listening? Oh, that's a good, good, good question. Um, There's this book that I read called Essentialism. Oh, so good. Have you read it? I like bought it from Amazon. Yeah. I haven't gotten through it yet, but I'm really it, excited about it. I, everyone's talking about it. It's so good. And that book, was all about like really, really honing in on what is the most essential. And um, for me, I had, I have almost two year old twins. Um, And so I have a lot that I'm juggling with my business and my babies and just general life. And so that book, Essentialism, really has made a huge difference in me in giving me permission to let things go. That If I, one, if I'm doing something out of the sense of obligation, 
then I need to not be doing it. Um, two, if I'm doing it because I feel like 70% into it, I need to not be doing it. Um, so it's made it really easy to be like, nope, I'm not going to focus on all of these things so that I can focus on what's really lighting me up. Mm, that's so good. Yeah, that's a great lesson. Thank mm-hmm. you for sharing that. So you mentioned your twins, which I think it's mm-hmm. so amazing that you have twins. Do twins run in your family? Kind of. My my mom, let's see, my mom's step, not stepmother, gra- I'm sorry, great-grandmother was a twin and then her cousin had twins. So there are some twins in our family, but it's not, it was a surprise. <laughs> that's, yeah. so, that's so cool. So having two babies at home at the mm-hmm. exact same time mm-hmm. um, must have been exciting and wonderful and challenging. What mm-hmm. has motherhood taught you about life and in your business? Oh my God, everything. <laughs> um, I mean, it's taught me that most most things don't matter. Um, like I said, like with with babies, with kids, there are like a million decisions to be made. Um, and what I have found is that most of the time, it doesn't really matter what you decide, but that you decide something and get going. Um, that helps me in my business so much when I'm like, I don't know, is this right? It's like, just do it. It's fine. Get, get moving. Um, picking my battles is a big one. Like what, what really picking my battles in a way that like kind of along the lines of the essentialism thing is like, what is really most important and then letting the rest of the stuff go. Um, I think that's been a huge one. And it's also taught me that I am way more capable than I realize. Um, and that's made a huge difference in my business just because, you know, there's, there's always doubt, there's always fear, there's always insecurity. And I think that, that knowing like, oh, well, I grew two babies in my body at once and I've, you know, they're doing great. And so like, I can do whatever. Yeah. Yes, like check, got this. <laughs> yeah, no, I it's totally like I I saw this thing on um probably on Pinterest or Facebook or something where it was like a cartoon and and this woman was like I'm so crafty I make people and it was like a pregnant lady, <laughs> so I think it's the most creative act that you can do and then after you have a child, much less two at the same time, you can do anything. It must just be so intoxicating to yeah and it it also kind of concurrently teaches surrender of like there's a whole lot that I cannot control um which is hard it's a hard lesson to learn but it also is great because it's like well I can't control that so I'm gonna let it go just not gonna worry about it you know like with my kids and there's so much with kids that you just have no control over and it's taught me to just be like oh well instead of like dwelling on that I can just kind of wipe my hands of it Mm, yeah that that and that's so hard because I think you know I know I'll speak for myself like I tend to stew on things like when Mm -hmm. something goes wrong or something and you just think about it over and over and over again and that keeps you stagnant that keeps you stuck and you really just when you let things go and move on it it gets it out of your head and you forget about it so easily so yeah and that's hard right like it's not it's not always easy to like in the moment let it go right until you start doing it over and over and then you realize Oh, it's actually easier than it's easier than dwelling on it. But you kind of have to take a breath and go for the letting go to to real to get to the other side and realize that like, oh, it's actually better to release that. Yeah, absolutely. So you I heard that you started your podcast when the twins were only four months old. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. What made you want to start a podcast and use that platform to share your work? Yeah, a couple of things. So a good friend of mine had started a podcast um, and I was enjoying listening to hers. Um, And I was, we got a minivan before the twins were born and it was a newer car. So it had the Bluetooth connectivity so I could connect my phone to it. 
And there are a lot of times when like the babies would be crying and I'd be like, I don't know what to do with you. So I'd put them in the car. I did kind of that new parent thing. I'd put them in the car and just drive for like a couple of hours. And I would go to a drive through Starbucks by my house and get my soy chai and then put on a podcast and run it through the car speakers and drive and just drive. My that kids would fall lovely. asleep. <laughs> it was awesome. It was like my time to just relax and yeah. not be like tending to something. Um, and so that was really – I hadn't really listened to podcasts before that except for like little moments here and there. And I thought I, – I, at the same time, I was also always having these conversations with my creative friends about creativity. And we'd have these conversations and I would say, oh, I wish we could record this because so many people mm -hmm. need to hear it. And so I was like, I'm going to start a podcast. That sounds fun. Um and I didn't at the time necessarily realize how much work it would be <laughs> to maintain. I was like, I'll do it every week. Easy. Um, I'll do it every day. It's yeah. like you get, you're like, this is so fun. <laughs> yeah. But it's been, it's been great. And, and in, in a way it was completely selfish because I wanted to be able to have these kinds of conversations that we're having right now and call it work. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I love my job. This is great. Yeah, that that was my motivation as well. Obviously, I share your love for podcasts. I love listening to them. I love recording them. I always say this, but I'm an auditory learner and I'm a conversationalist. You know, I think yeah. like the long form conversation is something that of a lost art until podcasts. You know, we would have these like short soundbite interviews with TV news and even radio, but this really allows the conversation to you know, grow and expand and, you know, the mm -hmm. questions that you ask at the beginning are different from the middle and the end. And I think that that's really cool and beautiful and and I love it. So I'm glad that you had yeah. the babies in the car and decided to start the podcast because I love listening to it. And it's a great way to meet people. You know, I really thought that starting the podcast would be a great way for me to be able to have conversations with people that I really ex respected and then might as well share that with other people too. Um, yeah, it's a big secret. Like when people people come to me a lot and they're like, I want to be friends with this person. I know we get along and I'm like, you should start a podcast. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. It's a great networking mm -hmm. tool. And yeah. it's, a great, um, it's a great way to I, – I didn't realize this at first because at first I didn't really have anyone listening. Mm -hmm. um, but now I have – over 500,000 downloads. So many people listen to the podcast. And those people, even though when I started, the guests didn't really have a platform they were sharing their work on. But now people go back and listen to my archives, which I yeah. cringe at because that was 2013 and I had like mm -hmm. no clue what I was doing. But people go back and listen to those, those episodes. And then those people are sharing their work now. So I'm so grateful for those people for coming on the podcast when I was so new at it because mm -hmm. – now, you know, all the people listening can hear those episodes as yeah. well. So it gives – it's like a win-win. It gives people a free platform to share their work that they don't have to prepare for at all. Mm -hmm. They just have to be themselves and show up. And it, you're asking for their time, which is, of course, a, a big offering. But um, but really, it's you get to lead the conversation and be creative with the things that you speak about. And I just yeah. – I love it. So, yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan and, like, for everybody listening – I'm also really glad I started it when I did because doesn't it seem like they're like everybody has a podcast now? It does. It seems yeah. like podcasting is like what blogging was like 10 years mm -hmm. ago when I yep. started. It was like nobody yep. really had a had a blog. Like what is a blog? I'm not quite sure. And then it's like everybody had a blog. And then podcasting was the same thing. Like I started mine in the beginning of 2013 where people were like, what is a podcast? Right. Whereas now, um, you know, thanks to Serial and a lot of comedians, like a lot more people are listening to podcasts, which is great, you know, but um, at the same time, it's way more saturated now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I always tell because a lot of people talk to me about wanting to start a podcast. And I'm always like, you should do it five minutes ago. So if you yeah. want to do it, everyone listening, if you're <laughs> thinking about it, just do it. Just make that call and do it because you're never going to wish you had waited. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, I'm so grateful that I started mine before cereal. Um, like, 
so grateful just because that way, once everybody else started doing it, I at least had a few episodes under my belt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love this business advice. I think this is so great. And so that really speaks to what you do um, on a day-to-day level, which is branding and business um, work with Hmm. all of your programs and what you do. So in all of your experience, you have so much experience with that. What would you say um, some misconceptions with um, small businesses and people who want to be entrepreneurs? What do you think some of the biggest misconceptions or questions you get are? Oh, my gosh. That's a really good question. One is that you're going to be making six figures overnight. Um, oh, you're, shoot. <laughs> I know. I know. Like, that's a huge First one. Level. And, yeah. And a lot, there are a lot of people out there who are like, I'll teach you how to make six figures overnight. So it makes sense that, um, it makes sense that that's one, yeah. but like, I don't know anybody who made six figures overnight. Um, most of the people who I know who are entrepreneurs, like it t- takes a few years, um, not even to make six figures, but to even get to a place where like your income is really self-sustaining. Um, if you're, I think for most people, if they're lucky, they do it in a couple of years. Um, but that's one thing is like you have to give it time. And so there's also a lot of advice out there saying like quit your day job. Um, I tend to say don't quit your day job yeah. yet because you got to hustle. Um, I think I think a lot of times people are surprised when they get into entrepreneurship how hard it is and how how long you have to work before you really see a whole lot of return on your investment. Um, not to sound like a Debbie Downer, but that just means get going and start now. Yeah. Cause the sooner you start, the sooner it's going to pay off. Um, that's one. I think another big one is that there's this misconception that like we all who are on, who are doing it have like totally have our acts together and are super organized and like life is really like we have it all figured out and everything is really easy. Uh, no, I don't know any, I don't know. I know a lot of entrepreneurs. I talk to them really candidly. I don't know anyone who's like, ah, I got it all figured out. I'm just going to coast. Like it, it just doesn't, I just, it, that is not a thing. And so I think people are surprised again when they get into it, like we mentioned earlier and they're like, I still am not quite sure what I'm doing, Mm -hmm. um, or where this is going. Like that is really common. And I think the third one is that it's, it's not scary. Like it is scary. I have doubts and fears all the time, as I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. And I just don't, I just have gotten to the point where I'm kind of resilient against them and I no longer let them stop me. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's such good advice. Mm -hmm. And I like what you said about in a year, you'll wish you, well, I'm just quoting, this is so funny. There's this Pilates place that I don't even go to, but it's like near my house. Uh-huh. And there's a um, sandwich board sign like out in yeah. front and it says, in a year, you'll wish you had started yesterday. And I think that really yeah. applies to everything in life um, and and business too. I, I just kept thinking about that sandwich board when you were talking. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's so true. I think, you know, if you have a creative idea, try it and try it while your work is supporting you or something else is yeah. supporting you and you don't have to put that pressure on the creativity to make your money. I Have you read Elizabeth Gilbert's new book, Big Magic? I haven't. I have a copy of it. You're the second person who's asked me that today. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. maybe that's a sign yeah. from the universe. It's amazing. I literally <laughs> read it in a day, Tiffany. It's so good. Um but any, and I think you'll love it because it's all about creativity. But she says, yeah. um, in there, she talks about this exact piece of work, which is like, yeah, she never, she always had a day job. Like as a writer, she was like, I don't ever want to put that pressure on the work to have to make me the money. It's, yeah. I never said, you know, my writing would make me money. I said I would be a writer. And mm-hmm. she just looks at herself as an artist. And she said she always worked another job until, Eat, Pray, Love came out and that was like eat, pray, freaking love and it like, right, took over right. the world. So yeah. um, so that was like a, a special case. But anyway, so I think, you know, hearing that, it it really changed everything for me. And I, I think there's a this kind of stigma or at least I'll speak for myself. I had this sense for a long time like, oh, I'm not a real entrepreneur unless I'm doing this full time and I don't and I'm making my like entire income from this one source. 
And that's just not true. You know, I think it's smart and it's actually a better business choice to, like you said, you know, have different ways to make money so you don't have to put all this pressure on the work and you don't have to feel needy because that needy energy can be sensed of like, I need you to become my coaching client so I can pay my rent and I need you to listen to the sponsor so I can like, no, it's just like, here's what I'm doing for fun and I like it and I'm cool, you know? And Well, and then your your decisions are are made by fear, you know, and that's, and fear is not, fear is not a motivator of creativity. Right. Yeah. And and you really have to have that like whole um, security and safety taken care of to be creative because nobody, nobody's creative when they're just worried about like how they're going to, you know, get their next meal or pay their yeah. rent. It's like totally. that, that'll kill creativity like nothing else. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I had to because I was kind of in and out of self-employment, right, where I started my coaching and then. I would not have work for a while and then be like, I need to make some money. And I would take kind of part-time jobs and I did a few random things. And for me, it was always about, I went back to my nonprofit job twice, um, my old nonprofit job. And for me, I always told myself, me getting part-time work actually is showing my commitment to my business because if I don't get this job and I just hope for the best, I'm not going to, it's not going to work. I'm going to get into debt or something bad is going to happen. And then I'm going to be forced to go work full time, at which point I'm going to have to give up my business. So for me, it was always like, what can I do that's going to help me pay the bills, free up that mental energy, um, and let me keep my focus on my business? Mm, Yeah. Such good advice. I'm so glad we're having this conversation. Yeah. And I, I think it's important to to know, again, for everybody listening, like there is a lot of talk on the internet of people who are like, passive income's the best. Get paid to exist. Quit your job. Leap in the net will appear. Like those people, I think it, I just want to point out, like all of those people get paid to teach you how to do this, but – they're not the ones who are like going to be cooking ramen at your house every night right. when you have $14 in your checking account. So it's okay if you don't listen to that anymore, everybody. Yeah, yeah. And Tiffany has an entire podcast episode about um, the myth of passive income that I really <laughs> enjoyed. Um, so I'll put that in the show notes. So – with this work that you do with entrepreneurs and even just like all your work, I guess now, what is your favorite part of what you do now? And what are some um, big moments where you've just been like, you know, I did good, you know? Yeah. I mean, I love it when people do it, right? Like I love it when people do the work and, and get things going. I have a six month program called it's a business time that I run with, um, a couple other friends and colleagues. And it's a six month coaching program and business building program where at the beginning, everybody knows that like they want a business, but they're not exactly sure what it is. And by the end they have their business, they have their mission, they have their branding and they have a website. That's amazing. And everything. Yeah, it's everything. And like we we ran that. We just wrapped that up. And I apologize for my dog. No, okay. um, I don't know if you guys can hear her. We what just, kind of dog do you have? She's a, a little border collie mix. Aw. Yeah, she's, well, she's very sweet. <laughs> Um, Sorry to interrupt you. I hope I didn't. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, We so we ran that program from April until the end of September. Yeah, and I think that at the end of that, when I was like, oh my god, like we got these people out of their like I don't know bubbles, and like they walked away with a whole website that had like an about page and offerings and branding that was clear and like a story woven throughout the entire thing, and that felt awesome. Like that was I think one of the proudest moments I've had was seeing all of the participants produce like have this thing. Um, so that's definitely one of those moments where when I see people, the like, I want to change lives. And so when I see lives being changed, that's huge. Even when people listen to my podcast and then 
tell me like, oh, I did this thing because you said mm. on your podcast that I could do it even if I was afraid. I'm always like, wow, people listen to me. That's really cool. Oh, that's so cool. I, I teach yoga as well. And there was this the, I will never forget the first time I taught my first yoga class and I said something like, everyone lift your right leg. And then I remember seeing an entire room of like 45 people lift their right leg. And I was like, whoa, I, they just did what I said, you know, and it, it's a pretty gratifying feeling. So I kind of know what you mean. Well, and I'm sure you know, too, as a podcast host, and I apologize for the dog. She's, okay. she's like, come on, mom. Um, as a podcast host, you know, you spend a lot of time behind the mic, but like by yourself. Right. And then you kind of put, you see download numbers and whatnot, but you put these things out into the ether and you're like, I don't know if anyone's listening. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. And so it's so so nice, right? When you get emails and people reach out to you and, and you're like, oh, okay, this work matters because you, I, I know it matters like in my heart. It matters to me. Like this conversation that we're having is important, I think. And it's important to tell the truth. Um, but it's always good to like receive that reinforcement too. Yeah, exactly. It, that's why I love, you know, getting tweets and Instagram messages Mm -hmm. and emails, like you said, and and hearing people that like the show and the show helped them and the show is with them on their commute and and all of it. It's, it's amazing. And it's like you said, so, so gratifying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is your biggest goal that you're working towards now? Mm, that's a good question. Um, so I am, let's see, I'm trying to, what are my big 2016 goals? I just mapped this stuff out. Um, I am interested in doing more speaking, more teaching. Um, definitely doing that. There might be a second podcast in the works. Ooh, very cool. Uh-huh. Um, that's more kind of business and branding focused. And um, I'll tell you, this is kind of a secret. Uh, so you heard it here first. Yeah. Um, I'm a- yeah, I'm actually planning on early, early 2016, um, launching a branding agency with my business partner. We're going to be offering like brand strategy and graphic design together as packages. And that's really exciting like that feels like sort of the next iteration of the work I want to be doing um so we are gonna go for it and and do it and go all in so that's that's kind of right now what's getting me really jazzed yeah congratulations that sounds amazing yeah thank you it's it's pretty fun it's pretty pretty cool we're really excited about it and I think that it's um you know, in terms of like what I what I see out there on online, I think it's something that is needed as kind of the the design work, but also the brand strategy piece of it, kind of going hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. All right there. So, what is something that you're struggling with now um, that you'd be willing to share, and that you're, you know, maybe fearful of, but you're doing anyways? That's a good question. I I mean, one thing I'm struggling with right now is just time. Um, I do most everything by myself. And there, there are a lot of moving pieces, as you know, in terms of keeping all the balls in the air. Um, and so I'm in the process, I'm about to hire somebody to help me um, with some marketing work. And um, it feels really important. It feels a little bit scary because there's a financial commitment that I'm making and there's that like a leap of faith of like, okay, I hope that I can afford to pay this person every month. Um, but I also know for me that that's, that's going to contribute to my growth and that's really important. So that's something that feels big and important and also a little bit scary. And I keep saying like, I need someone to be my Olivia Pope. Like I need someone who just like gets stuff handled. Okay, cool. Well, let's wrap with my signature questions. This is like the most fun part of the podcast. Okay. Okay. So what's your morning look like? What are the first few things you do when you wake up in the morning and how does that affect how the rest of your day goes? Ooh, so my morning routine is not one that most people should have. Um, I My husband is very generous and brings me coffee in bed every morning because he's amazing. And a friend of mine who's a health coach just recommended that I 
drink 12 ounces of water in the morning and then eat something before I have my coffee. So I wake up in the morning and drink 12 ounces of water and eat 12 almonds. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I eat something and then I drink my coffee in bed and typically I get on the computer and do a little bit of work first thing in the morning. Um, it's, it's not ideal, but like I said, my biggest challenge right now is time. And so in a, in an ideal, ideal world, like when I'm in my zone and things are flowing, I would wake up in the morning and write for half an hour. But it's been lately like I wake up and answer email for half an hour. So I don't recommend that to everybody. This is all about being real. That's so good. Because sometimes life life does do that and we do go to the phone early and yeah um, and it's different every day. And I think that's just the reality and vulnerability of life. So that's so cool. And having your own business, like you got to do what you got to do. You got to get it done. And so for me, that's a good time to get it done is, is right when I wake up. So that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. I also find too that personally, I'm more, uh, able to focus and just get things out in the morning, whereas in the evening, it's really hard for me to focus and and totally agree. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so on the other side of the day, what does your evenings look like? What are the last few things you do before you go to bed? Mm, that's a good question. I like to read before bed. I do not bring my phone to bed. Um, my phone lives in the living room. And that was something I started when I was pregnant because I was like, I don't want weird phone waves going into my babies, which is probably not a thing. Um, and then yes, when they were – Who knows? <laughs> who knows? I don't know. And then when they were little, I was like, I'm not going to get woken up in the middle of the night by some text message or something. And so I read – I try to read something that is not business or inspiration related before bed. Um, I love like young adult fiction. Um, right now I'm reading the biography of Alexander Hamilton and it's fascinating. Um, I try like that to me is like what just helps my brain shut down and helps me sleep. Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love reading fiction at at night as well. I usually listen to it on, on audible because sometimes Mm -hmm. I can't even be bothered to like use my eyes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, I, I've done that before, but then I always fall asleep and then I have to like find my place. So there's a sleep timer on audible. Oh, yeah, it's the best thing ever. Heard. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. I do love. What's your favorite audiobook? Oh my gosh. Um, I read like everything on Audible. I like that Elizabeth Gilbert reads all of her um nonfiction books, so I like to hear her read those. Um, right now I'm reading this fiction book called The Royal We. <gasps> I read that, it's so good. Yeah, don't tell me yeah. what happens at the end. No, I won't. Do you <laughs> do you like, read so Go good. Fuck Yourself? I did because uh, then I started like the for everyone listening the authors of this book re- write this blog called Go Fug Yourself and um, I started to read it because I saw that they wrote the book but that was the, how they I found out about them and they're amazing I love it yeah they're I've been so following funny. their blog for so many years and when that book came out I was like yes please and like. When it ends, I'll warn you, I was so sad. I just missed the characters a lot. I know. I feel like I know them so well. Like, I think about them a lot in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to have to, like... Uh, if the, with the ending, I'm gonna next time I talk to you, I'm gonna have to like talk to you about it because I yeah. need to like yeah. debrief. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk. There are some good twists in that one. Yeah, yeah, it it's was- crazy. I'm pretty close to the end, so a lot of the twists have happened, but yeah. I haven't gotten to the very end. And the wedding has not happened yet. So dun dun dun. Uh, <laughs> um, I have to. There's some something I want to tell you if you thought about it, like. But I don't want it to ruin for other people listening. So when we hang up, I'll, I'll tell you what okay. I was thinking. Okay. Um, okay. So next question. This is a fun one. So you're having a dinner party and you mm-hmm. can invite five people. Mm-hmm. So who would you invite? What would you make to eat? And what would you love someone to turn and ask you at the dinner party? And what do you hope that someone won't ask you at the dinner party? Oh, uh, that's a good question. <sighs> Gosh, okay, I can invite five people. Yep. Um, I would invite, this is a complete mishmash. I would invite Austin Cleon. He is a writer who I've had on my podcast, and he is like a really fascinating person to talk to. I would invite Lynn manuel Miranda, who is a, um, he wrote and composed the Broadway musical Hamilton that I'm like oh, cool. obsessed with, which is why I'm currently reading. I was going to ask you that when yeah. you said that about the biography. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would invite them. I would invite Amy Poehler. I would invite Kid President. Oh, love. 
Right. And then I would invite, oh gosh, who's my number five? Um, who's my number five? Who's I mean, I want to come to this party. I know. Though, it's so. going to be a really good dinner party. Um, oh my God. I like don't, I can't even think of who my number five is. Um, it would probably be a writer. Let me think really quickly. Tiffany, come on. I don't know who number five is. Well, I'll be number five. You should be number five. Okay. That would be great. Um, what I would make is I really, really like to cook. And one of my favorite things to serve at dinner parties are tacos. Oh, then I'm coming for sure. Yeah, because then everybody can do their own thing. Yeah. So it'd be tacos, but they would be like a really delicious tacos um, and margaritas. I'm picturing some guac involved. Oh, a lot of guac. Mm -hmm. Lots of guac, lots of cheese. But I'm like, so it, glad I made the cut. Yeah. Um, and then some kind of like yummy dessert like cheesecake. Yum. Um, what do I wish somebody would ask? God, I just, I just want people to talk about like real stuff. So anything that is not. The weather. So what do you do? Yeah. Right? Like I don't want to talk about sports. I don't want to talk about the weather. I don't want to talk about work. I want to talk about like real stuff. So that's what I hope people ask are like the questions that you're like, oh, we're going there. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's my favorite thing to talk about too. Yeah. So that, that's my, that's my, what do I want to talk about and what do I not want to talk about? Yeah. That, that's mm -hmm. so good. I, I feel like that too. All the stuff that like is taboo to talk about that we're like not supposed to talk about are like my favorite things to talk about. Totally. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so yeah, and then also like it's just it's just boring having to to talk about the other stuff. And I was having this conversation with a couple of my friends recently and we have different friend groups kind of. Like we know each other, but we don't know that many of the same people. And we were saying like it's so nice because when you are with people who are really in your community and tribe or with your family, a lot of times you'll end up talking about other people. Yeah. Not even in a gossipy way. It'll be like, oh, did you hear about so-and-so? She's sure. coming in and this person's job. And, and it's just like you don't really talk about like deep things and real things. Yeah. So we, we always do because we don't have very many people in common. So um, this dinner party would be the same way. <laughs> so it'd be mm -hmm. awesome. Exactly. Yeah, and just to get people's take on on like real life, real life stuff. Yeah, totally. So what's the best advice you've ever gotten and then the worst advice you've ever gotten? Ah. Well, let's see. Well, the worst advice is definitely like, what's coaching? You can't make money doing that. You should stay in your nonprofit job. Um, that would be the worst advice. And it was well-intentioned. And I think that's important to point out is that I've gotten a lot of well-intentioned advice from people who – grew up with a different set of circumstances than I did. And, and I think that's important to remember. And I've always reminded myself like that person's just looking out for my best interest. Um, but had I done that, I don't think I would have been very happy. Um, the best advice I've ever gotten. Uh, I have a business coach and she told me once you have a really good instinct. You should trust it. And I was like, Oh, all right. And I, that's really stuck with me. Mm. How do you remember to listen to your intuition? It was <laughs> like a, a guide thing for you. Um, I just hope that I remember in the important time, you know, it gets better. It gets easier the more you do it. And I think that, um, one thing I've realized at, in my life is that my gut has never actually steered me wrong. Um, the times in my life where things have sort of gone downhill, it's always been like when I've been like, I have this nagging feeling that X is going to happen, but I'm just going to go for this anyway. Um, you know, thinking, thinking about like dating the wrong guy and being like, oh, it's just going to be fun for a while. And then it just ends really poorly. Um, and so I, you know, I, I make a lot of. I put up a lot of signs above my desk and things like that. But um, I think I think it gets a lot easier with practice. Mm, yeah. How mm. did you meet your husband? Did Was that an intuition feeling when you guys met? 
We met on a boat. So he is a sailing instructor. Oh my God, and, that's so cool. Yeah, and a friend of ours introduced us and she was like, oh, I want you to meet this guy. And I was like, oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> and then like, there he was. But can I, do you have time for me to tell you yeah, a couple no, of stories with that? So two things. One, so we met in 2007, which was like when dinosaurs roamed the earth, I feel like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it was before online dating was, like, a thing, right? Oh, like, now right. Every, now online dating is, like, just what you do if you're <laughs> yeah. single. Um, back then, it was just starting to be a thing. And I had a friend who was, like, please, please, please do it with me, please. And I was, like, I don't want to do I Like, I was just, like, I don't want to do it. I don't know. I just – my gut was telling me not to do it. And so I made a deal with her, and I was, like, okay, if I haven't met anyone by June 1st, I'll do it. Well, we met on May 31st. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I have chills. Um, Yeah. And so then the other thing is that this was like when – remember when Oprah was talking about the secret? Yes. Back in the day and like the secret was like the thing. So I heard the secret woman on Oprah and I was like, I want to manifest something. This sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I like listened to the audio book of the secret in my car and – I'm not necessarily saying the secret is everything, but I think that there are some things about putting your intention, you know, in a good place and da, da, da. So I was, I, this was when I still worked at my nonprofit job and I was really into the secret and I was like, I am going, my birthday is in October and I was like, I'm going to Mexico with my boyfriend. And I started saying that in the beginning of 2007 and all my friends were like, okay, you're crazy because you don't have a boyfriend. (laughs) Like what boyfriend? And I was like, I don't care. I'm going to Mexico with my boyfriend for my birthday this year. Oh like I'm, I'm going to start like, doing that like today. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm just putting it out there and I trusted and I wrote a list and I did all this stuff. So Tim and I start dating like in June, right? We met on May 31st. We started dating in June. And I wouldn't say we, it was like – I mean it was – it was never ambiguous whether or not we were into each other. Like we both knew from the very beginning, like this is something. Um, and he took me like our first like trip away. We went away for a couple of days in August and we were sitting in the hotel, like watching TV or something. And there was something on about Hawaii. And I was like, Oh, I've never been to Hawaii. And he was like, Oh, you should go. You would love it. He was like, you know, you should go. He was like, and then he started asking me about Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> I know. I was like dying. And I was like, oh, yeah. And he was like, we should go to Mexico for your birthday. Oh, I'm my not- gosh. I know. And I was like, I was like, oh, my God, don't it freak out. It wasn't even your idea. It wasn't. Even, that's the thing. It wasn't even my idea. And I had like forgotten about it. And he said it. Oh, my and gosh. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. But I was like. Oh yeah, that sounds like fun. Right. I was trying to be all breezy. I didn't tell I didn't tell him for like a year because I was like, oh my god, I'm like, Yeah, that would creep him out, maybe. Maybe stalker person. And he ended up like a witch. (laughs) No, exactly. And then I when I finally told him, he was like, I don't believe you. Like he didn't believe me. And so I had to bring in my work friends and be like, You guys tell him. And they were like, No, it's true. And also we thought she was completely Looney Tunes for saying this and then like it actually happened and I was like "Mm mm-hmm so you can call that manifesting maybe there is a gut intuition thing maybe I'm just a little psychic oh my gosh that is so good I'm so glad I asked I was nervous I was like I really want to know I'm really curious how she met her husband but I hope she doesn't think it's weird that I asked because this is the first time we're talking Mm -hmm. and I'm so glad I did because that was an amazing story yeah yeah so you know, don't be afraid to put things out there. Yeah, it's so funny. So in, in 2007, I was like um, – I was in high school. I was a junior, and I was having to take those, like, placement tests. Mm-hmm. And um, I really wanted to improve my score. And so I went to, like, this um, – or actually, I hadn't even taken them yet. I wasn't even trying to improve. I was just trying to, like, do well on them. Mm-hmm. And so my mom, like, a bunch of kids at my school went to this, um, like, tutoring – person and she was like the best she was so cool she would like always make me a snack she was just like she played good music she was like way cool Mm -hmm. and then one day she was like hey I think you need to 
um, the test was maybe like the next day or something. She's like, watch this movie. And it was the movie of The Secret. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right. I don't know why I like said I would do it, but I just thought mm-hmm. this like lady was really nice and cool. And so I watched it and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do amazing on the placement test. And I did. I did like really well. And I swear it's because of The Secret. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm like not great at tests. Yeah, it's 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 pretty powerful. So, um, can it, do you want me to tell you another secret, yeah, another story about it. manifesting? So, um, I have a really good friend who we have the same birthday. Oh, cool! And we bonded. Like as soon as we found out, we were like, of course, because we're like total same Z's. Like we're super like psychically connected, cool. and we had always talked about having what we call birthday twins. Like we always call ourselves birthday twins, and we were always like when we were talking about getting pregnant, I was like, let's get pregnant at the same time. Oh and then our babies will have the same birthday. Um, cause we're like creepy like that. And so we were like, let's do it. But then we ended up not getting pregnant at the same time. And, yeah. um, but I had twins, right. My right. birthday twins. Um, <laughs> and then her daughter who was born seven months after my girls, um, has the same birthday as our other friend's daughter. And so, like, we both got our birthday twins. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the universe listens, but it doesn't always give you right what you think it's going to. Yeah. Right? Like, we both got our birthday twins, but not with each other. So, right. yeah. That was another – when her daughter was born, I was like, oh. <gasps> Oh my God, we got our birthday twins. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. funny. I love and, stories like that so much. Mm-hmm. Um it's amazing. So yeah. a couple more of these quick fire questions. Yeah. So this one's fun. Um you were trapped on an you are trapped on an island mm-hmm. and you can only bring with you one TV show to binge watch, one mm. book to read that you won't get sick of, one food to eat that you won't get sick of, and one movie to watch that you won't get sick of okay um okay so tv show friends of course Duh, and there's so many seasons that's a really yeah. solid choice yeah um book oh, gosh that is so hard because i like love so many books um uh, what would I bring? Like maybe the last Harry Potter. That would be good. Because it's really long and there's a whole lot in there. So I think I'd bring the last Harry Potter. Um, what, what else? Something to eat. Definitely tacos. Movie. Um, and then movie. The Sound of Music. Mm, nice. Yeah. What song would you recommend right now? What song you're, are you liking right now or just that you love in general that you want to recommend to people? Yeah. Oh, my God. You, the Like the Hamilton cast album. So do you know about this musical? Can yeah. I geek out? Yeah. yeah, geek out. But tell me about it. I mean, I've seen like a bunch about it online and like watched yeah. like some videos. So it is a – it's a musical about Alexander Hamilton, our first secretary of the treasury. and But it's a hip-hop musical and all of the main characters are played by minorities so they're all latin american and african-american actors and actresses and it's like amazing and i am obsessed and i listen to it literally nonstop. um the entire thing it's so good so i want i think everybody should get that and listen to it it's so good it's got like really great beats the the linguistics of it, like the words that are used in it are amazing. It's really smart. It's super catchy. But also it's like kind of educational. Like yeah. I'm learning all about the founding fathers in a way that Very now cool. is interesting. So that's what I cannot get out of my head these days. Cool. Mm-hmm. I'm a big um, show tune fan. So I'm going to check it out. <gasps> Listen to it and then let me know what you think because you're going to be like, oh, my God, how have I not lived? How have I not had this in my life until now? You're going to be obsessed. I'm excited. I'm super excited. What about a movie you've seen like in the last year that you want to recommend to people? Mm. 
Ooh, let me think about that. I don't watch a lot of movies these days because I'm really tired all the time. I really liked Inside Out. Oh yeah, I've been I've been hearing about that. Yeah, that movie was amazing. The Pixar movie. Um, yeah, my friend Nikki, who's listening to the podcast, hi Nikki. Mm-hmm. She hi, Nikki. Um, <laughs> she recommended it to me like yesterday. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like the Elizabeth Gilbert um, book for you. I, I should probably watch it now. Yeah, it's really good. And then I also loved uh, Trainwreck. I haven't seen it yet. I know, which is it's, crazy. I need to watch it so much. I'm going to watch it, it like today. Yeah. It was really good and like really entertaining. And I love Amy Schumer. She's yeah, fantastic. and just like easy to watch. Um, so I think the, those are two very different movies starring two very different Amys, but those would be my choices. Cool. Very mm-hmm. cool. Um, what was the time the – time you laugh the hardest that you can remember ah I try to laugh every day a lot um you know when I was in Portland last month um at a conference doing the keynote and I really like going to events and meeting people but it's also kind of exhausting for me like I'm a little bit of a secret introvert in that way and so my friend Meredith the one who actually was my birthday twin in the story yeah. Oh. Um, Hi, Meredith. She, Hi, Meredith. <laughs> um, she and I were in, in a shared a hotel room and we had like gone out for oh, a drink that's after. So yeah. Pillow and talk. <laughs> and she, we were like tired. Like we were like, what should we do? And I was like, can we just go back to the room and like watch a movie? So we got a bottle of champagne and we went back to our hotel and we got under the covers and ordered room service chicken tenders and fries and drank our champagne and watched train wreck and it was like the best. Oh, that sounds like perfect. Yeah, it was like the best and I was like this is exactly everything I need in this moment. So that I think would be would be the moment. So this is amazing. I have like a bunch more questions um, that I could ask you, but I'll I'll let you go um, for the evening with fo- after one final question. So as you know, the name of this podcast and my blog is The Wellness Wonderland. So when I offer that term to you, Tiffany, to live in a wellness wonderland, what comes up? What does that mean to you? Ah, that's a struggle these days for me as like being – I mean, I think it's about just like making really deliberate choices. Mm. You know, and and trying to get quiet. That that's what that means for me. Like when I think about the times when I've lived, really lived in wellness, it's like I'm I'm able to sort of step back a little bit and be like, okay, what do I really want, and what's really going to serve me? Mm, so amazing! Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and everything that you shared. Um, and thank you everyone for listening. If you want to just tell everyone, it'll all be in the show notes, but if there's anything else that we missed or anything else that you want to leave people with or tell people where to find you. Yeah. So, um, and thank you. This was super fun. Um, you guys can all find me at tiffanyhan.com and that's H A N Han like solo. Um, and then I'm on all social media platforms at the Tiffany Hahn. Um, and if you have any quite like we talked about earlier, if you have anything to add or share, let us know. Cause it's yeah. always fun to hear from people. Um, tweet at, and us. S- tweet at us or Instagram's my favorite place to be. Um, so yeah, I would love to hear from you guys if there are any big takeaways. Amazing. This is so much fun. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. This was great. so much for listening thank you to tiffany Hahn for coming on the podcast if you liked this episode be sure to tweet your feedback at me at tiffany leave us a review on itunes check out her podcast and a shout out to gabby bernstein for creating spirit junkie masterclass digital it's the sponsor of the podcast this week so if you are wanting to share a message with the world if you want to be a yoga teacher a podcaster if you have a book that you want to write if you want to start a blog, if you want to start a YouTube channel, if you want to share anything creative with the world in any way, this program shows you how to do it. It gives you all the resources that you need. Gabby and Zach put together such a comprehensive business guide that I really appreciate and have used quite a lot. So if you want to know more about that, you can definitely send me a message personally and I will answer any of your questions for that. You can also go straight to the page on my website 
katiedalebaut.com slash masterclass. katiedalebaut.com slash masterclass. And you will get all the info you need on the bonuses, on how to sign up, on everything. So check that out. It's a really great program. Really grateful to Gabby for creating it and really grateful for you for taking the time to check it out. So just wanted to shout that out one last time. And again, thank you so much for listening. And the track you're hearing behind me now was created by the amazing Caroline Dooner of The Fuck It Diet. Check her out. And thank you so much to Caroline for creating the introduction music theme song jingle whatever you want to call it because she is so talented and awesome so shout out caroline shout out gabby shout out tiffany han shout out my amazing producer amanda shout out to you for listening you guys are awesome up on the show next week well it is none other than my astrologer danielle page and it's a really interesting fascinating episode because we actually do my chart live on the air and she tells you personal information about me it's a really fun episode i was actually just with danielle in venice we hung out when i was in california with her and we went to Gracias Madre and Cafe Gratitude, and it was just such a fun time. So you'll see that upcoming in the next vlog that I do. And by the way, thank you for the feedback on the last vlog. That word vlog, I really don't like. My friend Jess Mernan, who you guys know from the podcast, friend of the podcast, Jess Mernan, we think it sounds like a word for throwing up. I just vlogged, or that makes me want to vlog. But anyway, it's also a video blog so I like making those and I really appreciate your feedback on the one that I made from my trip to New York and you're going to be seeing my LA trip very very soon and then my Columbus trip after that so anyway love you guys I'll see you next week on the podcast and of course by see you I mean you'll hear me in your earbuds next week when I'm talking to Danielle Page get excited